Welcome to this week's Dead Horse podcast. With me today is special guest Anush Patel. Hello. <laughs> and uh, Rashi. Hello. And Vivek. Hi. Let's start by talking about uh, a game. I think all of us have played. Brothers: A Tale of Two Souls. Or two sons. Oh, come two on. Sons. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, Not that's... again. Don't do it. It's it's brothers: A Tale of Dark Souls. What you're saying? Yeah. And the title you're using is a far cry from the real title. Yeah. Okay. Brothers: yeah. A Tale of. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Beyond: A Tale of Two Brothers. And. Okay. Yeah. And. Sure. <laughs> so okay, Rashi, you recently completed the game. Uh, so yeah, oh, yes. just tell us your thoughts about the ending and. Like how it went. Why do you have to remind me of the ending? That was like the saddest part ever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. such a good ending. It's such a yeah. Good yeah, seriously, it it brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> it's yeah, that good. <laughs> yeah, I think it, a lot. It brought tears to a lot of people's eyes. Like at least, like yep. I was also crying a little bit. Yeah, and I was uh, very oh, effectively built up. That was. Arun was Arun was crying like the Indian man. थोड़ी <laughs> 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 um uh, it really transfor- transported me into this you know fable type of world that they built it was awesome yeah control scheme was very very crucial to uh, the success that brothers became yeah. because if it wasn't for the control scheme that twin stick control scheme it yeah. would not have yeah it i just realized i'm really bad at it you know <laughs> because samajh nahi aa raha tha how to play the game because you know i'm yeah. I, i was so bad at it. seriously <laughs> no, that, that, that might be more common than you think because I had a lot of trouble with the controls initially as well. Yeah, same here. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's definitely yeah. learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I think not... that learning curve is okay considering. Ah, today most of these games all have the same control schemes and they don't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely yeah. unique and it it mm-hmm. it, it I would add have, to the. Yeah, thing. I wouldn't have played it any other way. Like yeah, yeah. compared yeah. to the control scheme that it was is, there, yeah. There is no doubt that it is a clunky control scheme, but it is the only control scheme that could have made that game special. Yes. Though yeah. honestly, I kind of wish it was like a two-player thing so that you know I could play it with another person if I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, एक option देना चाहिए था उनको like a local co-op kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah, but no, the thing like the thing which I felt like why that would not have been appropriate because you literally play as the bond Both. between two two yeah, yeah, yeah. siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You play as the bond. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, like, like you were literally the bhaiyon ka pyar in that <laughs> game. Like that's what you were. God. I am sorry for for some Indian studio to clone this game and call it Ram or Sham. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I thought Karan Arjun. Okay, mile mein alag ho gaye. Karan Arjun. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. Karan Arjun. Yeah, how can you like yeah. You're basically yeah. and you're basically controlling the ma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should control. Well, it's not the ma. It's Rakhi. Basically, Rakhi is the mother and all that. Yeah, Rakhi. Yeah. You should have. You should have Rakhi. Rakhi Kaavan. See where she where she goes. Like Mary Karan Arjun, Aayenge, and like Amrish Puri's face just is contorting in anger as she says that. Yeah. <laughs> like you can make a spin-off called Brothers: A Tale of Two Plumbers. Like you know Mario and Luigi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there's, a, but yeah, no. Like what this game is great because it has a. very constrained scope and it explores one part of a thing like in much detail so it it oh, yeah. it starts out saying that yeah okay i have this control scheme mm. and i have this story i want to tell mm. and then like it try it explores all possible uh like permutations and combinations of how like that plot and that uh Like that mechanic. I know. Like, the yeah. good thing about a lot of indie games last year was that. Uh, sorry for using that word again, indie games. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, people haven't heard the the warm up discussion. We're, so <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. fine. We're fine with you using we're indie fine, games. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We are going to use it liberally. Yes, yeah, we will use it. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but basically the uh, the good things about a lot of game indie games last year was that they, uh, that they actually tried using concept rather than the genre first. They yeah. uh, they yeah. tried conveying what they wanted to through the mechanics. Like Papers Please did that really really well. Yeah. So did Brothers. So th- these kinds of games were different from the initial wave of um, indie games who used basic tools, which almost all games had used before, like text or cutscenes. Yeah, or dog. So yeah. rather than using them, they actually use the mechanics to bring out the any kind of emotion or the message that they wanted to convey in the player, and yeah. and was really effective and unique in that sense. Yeah, no, like, definitely. It was, agree. Yeah, it was so much fun. You know, like um, if you interact with something, you know, so if you interact using the little brother. एक डिफरेंट टाइप का इंटरेक्शन होता है बट बड़े भाई के साथ एक डिफरेंट इंटरेक्शन दैट वाज सो गुड आई मीन छोटे छोटे चीजें इन्होंने इतना ध्यान दिया था उस चीज पे या एंड दैट इज व्हाट रियली मेक्स अप अ गेम इंटरेक्शन इज व्हाट मेक्स अप द गेम बिकॉज़ अदरवाइज यू डोंट हैव एनी लिंक्स टू द गेम गेम का जो दुनिया है यू डोंट हैव एनी कनेक्शन टू दैट या आई होप कोजिमा रियलाइजेस दैट वन डे शॉट्स फाइट यस दैट या दैट दैट्स श्योरली नॉट गोइंग टू कॉज एनी कंट्रोवर्सी ए ओके 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 ए ए कोजिमा हैज रियलाइज्ड दैट लाइक Ten times over. Play the fucking Metal Gear games. <laughs> so, though, I actually agree more with Ansh than with Vivek, but yeah, whatever. Like Vivek's input so, doesn't count. Sala, Metal Gear game खेला है तूने साला? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Metal Gear games were on PC, right? Like Metal Gear One, I remember playing all the way. One is on. PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 One, one is on, on PC, PC, yeah. The first, I think two two Metal Gear games are on PC. I'm not. Yeah, sure. the, the the first two ones which both took place in Zanzibar. No. Oh. Yeah. I have the HD collection though. अरे वो uh, they were all uh, focusing on uh, they all took place before the the original uh, the uh, the PS1 वाला Metal Gear. That's why they, they even referenced वो जो Ninja था क्या नाम था उसका Grave of Revengeance. Yeah. You're talking about you're talking oh, about Metal Gear okay, Solid One was also on PC. Taking on yeah. the boss, the big boss. नहीं no, I'm talking about Metal Gear only, only Metal Gear. Yeah, okay. okay, no, we're talking about Metal Gear Solid. I know Metal Gear Solid, Solid was on PC too. Yeah. Solid One was on PC. Solid yeah. Two, I don't think is on PC. Okay. But yeah, whatever. So anyway, two is, like, yeah, two is on PC as well. Two is on PC as well. Well, two, two be all of them released. Kya tha PC version? It was crap. It didn't work that well. But still, it it was released on PC. Yeah. Sons of Liberty. Ah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah, like to get back on track to our discussion. Yeah, I think like part of the reason beca- is that. Uh, because like games now realize that they cannot compete with the sheer scale of like grand theft auto or watch dogs or assassin's creed so what they do is they do one thing and like one thing well yeah and yeah, yeah i think that's uh, it's the logical next step compared to what you said earlier as in for example braid like it tried to shoehorn its like metaphor about the atomic bomb thing into a platform and it was, and it was lame it was lame yeah. it was unique back then but i think Ten years down the line, people will look back at Braid, and already now many are looking back at Braid and are, are, are just thinking that wait, hold on a second, that wasn't really as cool as we thought it was back then. Yeah, I mean, I if if it were not for that one level, like Braid would have been completely unremarkable. Like, yeah, you know, the final on, it level. It depends on yeah. how you're looking at. It depends on how you're yeah. looking at Braid. From a mechanical point of view, from a design standpoint, it's still got some pretty amazing puzzles. Yeah. The point yeah, point yeah. point of view of narrative, it's not yeah. that great a narrative. Yeah. But. Like I don't like I've never been impressed with Braid because it has a great narrative. I've been impressed with Braid always because the puzzle design is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty smart yeah. puzzle design. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that yeah, completely agree with that. Yeah. So so yeah, I think that's like I, I'm pretty excited about like what new games will come because now it's like there there's a lot of games that come in which completely rethink stuff we take for granted. Like brothers did with its control scheme, then papers please, etc. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Hotline Miami was pretty good too. Yeah. So uh, Hotline oh, Miami was just tough. like yeah, great execution so rather than like complete rethink of everything. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mechanically, it's nothing new. It's kind of yeah. like Super Meat Boy, but a game in which you kill people instead. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So it's yeah. madness. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've played a little bit of Hotline Miami and it is absolute madness. Yeah. So we can finally talk about the ending of Brothers since everyone here has finished it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so is there anyone here who didn't like the ending? I didn't like the part that led up to the ending. Uh, the Snow City thing, where that woman suddenly starts jumping like Spider-Man and stuff and has super strength. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like the the brothers just kind of roll with it because I guess it would be impolite to point out. <laughs> yeah, that, that felt weird. Like to me, like it was such a tonal shift. And at that point, as soon as she started jumping around, at that point, like it became clear to me that yeah, this game is there's going to be a betrayal. It's not going to end well. And yeah, especially because the brothers were completely clueless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She totally ambushed them, but. I don't know. Um, I didn't see that coming. You know, Joe, bichara mar jata hai. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah, saw. I saw yeah. it coming. I I knew one of them was going to die. I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. Even I. Yeah. I figured out that they would probably end it in in that way because that generally when you think of an emotional ending, you think that as as a possibility those are there. At least one of them is going to die, or both of them are going to die, or they are going to be somehow uh, permanently separated somehow. Yeah, I expected the father to die. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, yeah, like I did not like like I knew that something bad was gonna happen. But the, by I, the time yeah. they would return home, you know, he would already be dead, and everybody would like, yeah, you know, we're sorry, but your father died. In the, yeah, no, that, that didn't happen too. Because like because they climbed it actually. Yeah, because that they took a rather scenic detour. I, I imagine. No, they. Yeah, yeah the, like the the ending that yeah. they have is a lot is a lot worse than like uh, their father dying. It's like their father yeah. becoming cured and. Like basically realizing how how hard he's failed his family and sobbing at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I love the ending, but yeah, just like it, and I still love the game, but just like that little part of it was kind of, I guess, like rubbed rubbed me the wrong way. I guess though, still like once uh, that whole spider thing ends. Uh, mm. After that, uh-huh. still like I I started enjoying the game again. because like oh, that yeah. the whole part where like the big brother is dying and the little brother has to go up the tree yeah yeah oh no that was yeah. that was actually fun yeah and then he you know tries to uh, he comes uh, like uh, you know apna fear ko overcome karta yeah, hai yeah. he's like yeah, he no i have to swim and i have to do this i have to do this for my brother and yeah. for my dad and for everybody yeah. else <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the, to be honest at that point i was completely uh, like clueless for 10 minutes I thought I was, that I was I was just game... shocked okay I'm searching for how to yeah. wipe my eyes off yeah. I, I thought the ending of the game was going to be like that younger kid trying to swim and drowning basically mere ko laga ki dono marne wale yeah my god that would have been the ultimate downer ending like everyone dies like even their dad dies because he oh, doesn't no. get doesn't get the medicine so it's just like yeah, everyone dies yeah yeah that would have been that would have been bad <laughs> that would have been a pathetic ending yeah. for sure Killing too many people is never effective, and that actually even this uh, George R R Martin knows because yeah. killing everyone is going to just make people predictable that okay, this guy is going to die or yeah. someone is going to die. He's just going to reduce uh, him. Yeah, now I yeah. think he's going to stop killing people now and you know just carry on with the story. And that's what he that's wants you to think. That's yeah, that's what he wants you to think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll do that. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Like a well-timed death. Like uh, the well-timed part should is especially mm. important. It's, it's not it just well-timed. Part, yeah. It should be like it should be on justified? some level. It, yeah. Justified death. Yeah. 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 Like George R R Martin deaths, I never feel cheated because they're all deaths made because of decisions made by those characters. Yeah. In even in even in Brothers, it's a decision. It's it's bad decision making that leads to that yeah. guy dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At that mm. point, it just like. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, like I just wanted a bit of a bit more genre saviness from the characters because really, like, come on, like, yeah, yeah, because like everybody saw this coming, like nobody was like, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I, I love the part in the giant's fortress where like the, you had to like use the combo of the brothers to swing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that uh, that was oh that oh was that was amazing. That was I lo- amazing. I love that part, and uh, I love the part where you're flying on the cage dowel. in the yeah. giant but the ending of Which that is, where the very dies the bird dies that was sad oh yeah that was uh, yeah i know <laughs> yeah that was bad there are too many places where like n- nice bad things happen to nice people in that yeah. like the the troll his mm, wife true, is, true. Uh, is 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 enslaved and you have to free her and it's uh, like they're the only the, the trolls ended up well right the trolls didn't die <laughs> yeah, yeah but i told everyone else it's not exactly <laughs> They're not exactly yeah. in the best situation. They're ve- yeah, they're still yeah, they still yeah. live really close to the place where they were enslaved. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I suppose they can run away. I mean, yeah. I mean, the bright side is that the people, the the enslavers, were nowhere to be found. I guess. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's a, a good part. 
So yeah. Yeah, actually the thing about brothers which I liked was that it reflected uh, like it was part of the environment from which it was made like um, uh, it was a very dark uh, fable but also a fable which was which also had a lot of positive messages to yeah. give in the end. True. Yeah. 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 And uh, it 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 kind of sums up what Scandinavian fables are all about because Scandinavian fables are generally very dark themed because yeah. I don't know uh, people are permanently trapped in uh, dark winter and uh, cold. Uh, yeah. yeah. So 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 they end up making a lot of dark themes, but it's like every fable it needs to have some kind of a moral or a positive message for. There's, there's warmth everywhere, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And there's yeah. that is like even though the even though the setting is really grim, it's also like breathtakingly beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, 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 that giant battlefield thing, I was shocked. I was like, yeah, that was that's, great. That yeah. was great, you know. Yeah. Do the tribal part was kind of weird, you know, and the the one where they just kind of stood over each other. I was like, that's a very convenient god to have. <laughs> that was that was a bit weird. The the yeah. tribal part was very convenient, but like. Yeah. I don't know. My favorite moments in that game were just sitting on the benches. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the benches. Yeah, the benches the were so great. Yeah. But uh, definitely the tribal part was a little confusing to me. I mean, I could not understand what to do, and then you know, I eventually had to read a walkthrough. What to do? Yeah, the I, oh, tribal <laughs> part. Yeah, it, it's very adventure gamey, I guess. In uh-huh. that, like, you just happen to have this one chewing gum and this one car key in your inventory, and yeah. they will combine them. Yeah, very nineties adventure gaming. Yeah. Like, <laughs> lot of these yeah. Lucasarts games ka kya rehta tha ki they they were basically they ended up being the inventory management ho jata tha unlock yeah, right yeah. ye fix this uh, ye do item ko combine karo then use it to solve this puzzle and wo yeah. interconnected yeah. bahut ho jata tha wo yeah. Haan, yeah. Haan, yeah. Haan, it that yeah. element but the is most yeah. yeah yeah no the most iconic games among them i i think are still famous because the dialogue was excellent but yeah, yeah the inventory, inventory management is horrible in order yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah Yeah, nobody likes the inventory management part of adventure games, and I think modern adventure games have pretty much figured it out. Took them twenty years, but they, but they finally figured yeah, it out. Yeah, which is why I think that yeah. uh, better late uh, than never. Yeah. Grim Fandango or Longest Journey के बाद perhaps the adventure journey, the adventure genre is reaching its peak with uh, Kentucky Route Zero. You, you guys should really check that out if you haven't played it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's on my kind of uh, like to get list backlog. Yeah, but but I guess yeah, like I just. <laughs> Yeah, need to get uh, like a lot of time to. I guess I'm just waiting for all the episodes because that's what I do. I like, need more oh, time. Lagega for because like this, uh, the gap between the second and the third episode was almost eight, eight to ten months. Yeah. Almost a year, na? Hmm. The, they are making it very, very slowly, and we, at at one point we were all frustrated. Like, when will they make it? When will they release it? <laughs> But when <laughs> Act Three came out, we were like completely blown away. Like. Few other moments, they are so beautiful, but they are so deep, dark, layered, and interpretative. But the writing is solid. It, the writing is unlike anything that uh, games have as a medium have tried because it's basically magical realism. And magical yeah. realism as a fictional genre, uh, games haven't tried before because it's not an easy thing to try and succeed. And bo- this does it really well. And its art style is also superb. Say it like. If you use Unity, you will basically understand how, what they're doing. But still, it is amazing what they actually uh, are able to do with just simple uh, 2.5D perspective, and they do it really well. Mm. Yeah. No, okay. We'll definitely uh, yeah. Play, yeah, we'll check it soon. Out. Yeah. 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 It's, it's on. It's on my like yeah wish list kind of thing. Yeah. Steam sale is coming. On the other end of the adventure game scene, there is the Telltale guy stuff, which yeah. is Walking Dead and all that stuff. Mm. No, I think like, I the adventure game there. is just start. Uh, like the adventure game genre is, is just like gathering steam. I think like now Double Fine are finally back to making adventures. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was through Double Fine only. It, not through Double Fine. It started through Telltale when Steam ka jabi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they started allowing DLCs and episodes. Na, tab tabi Sam and Max aaya tha. Yeah. Two thousand six. Yeah. So Sam and Max became very popular, and then after Sam and Max. Yeah. Season one and season two, they started. They brought in Back to the Future, and they started getting all these licenses. Yeah. Wallace and Gromit was a season. Tha. Yeah. Then after that, uh, Telltale became really, really uh, popular. They had a very dedicated fan base, and then they finally uh, ended up getting uh, Walking Dead, and yeah, the rest is history. And I would like to uh, yeah add one uh, adventure game franchise which I absolutely love: Blackwell Adventure Games. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They are, they, yeah. Blackwell Legacy, the entire Blackwell trilogy is amazing. Yeah. The, I think it's now a pentilogy or something or quadrilogy or something. Five, yeah. five games. Yeah, Blackfell Epiphany, it just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's no longer a trilogy, a proper trilogy. Now it's yeah. more of a series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. Blackwell games are awesome. Yeah, Vagetai in general. Yeah, their output is generally pretty excellent. Yeah, yeah. Gemini Ru also was really good. Yeah. Though yeah. I kind of, yeah, I kind of just uh, like sort of, uh, I guess rage quitted in that one part where like the guy is chasing you and you have to uh, run away and quickly or he'll shoot you. Yeah, I never like real time puzzles some... in my adventure. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's right. Because it because they're prone to failure and uh, yeah. real time failure in adventure games just ends up being frustrating. It's not fun. Yeah, because the the control scheme is just not equipped to like what would be an easy challenge in any other game, just jumping over a railing, like a basic challenge. Ends yeah, yeah. up being this big thing where you are quickly clicking and it's just yeah. Definitely <laughs> yeah, not my favorite part of that game. Have you played on my favorite Vajadai game is this one, the Shiva. Have you played the Shiva? Mm, no. Uh, it's a really good game. It's like a yeah. very diff- uska premise is very unique. Hai. Yeah, um, I know. It's, a, it's about a rabbi, right? Yeah, it's about a rabbi. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's about a rabbi. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, it, it's worth playing uh, because oh, like, starting ka, it was like this uh, rebirth of the adventure genre because adventure genre was, as a kid, it was my favorite kind of games. Yeah. I love. Lord Grim Fandango and uh, uh, The Longest Journey, Monkey Island and yeah. uh, Day of the Tentacle. So, those games were very good, but they, it just, they just died after a point because uh, they were no longer seen feasible. Studios did not want to publish them. Yeah. Gamers got yeah. bored of them. No, I, I don't think it was like it. I think part, most of it was due to like some uh, having just really weird ass puzzles that did not make sense. <laughs> Like, like I don't need to. I do. I need to bring up that puzzle, right? From Gabriel Knight Three. Like, oh God. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone remembers that one puzzle. Yeah. God. So, so, so yeah. It's just no, yeah. N- not necessarily all games. I think uh, some of the really good and well-designed ones, like Grim Fandango, did not have very dense puzzles. But yeah, most of these adventure games do end up having those. But I think main problem why they died was because uh, of a couple of factors. One was that uh, uska jo decline tha adventure, adventure games, ka, it coincided with the rise of shooters. Uh, because of the rise of shooters uh, and any adventure games were not selling that great as well. So, LucasArts pe pura sa financial pressure aga and they basically shut down their adventure division. And at the same time, uh, making these kind of... Uh, 2D interface games did not was not very popular anymore because yeah. third person console ka pura aisa entry aa gaya tha that console I think third person that camera. was roughly the same time where the uh, real time strategy genre also thinned out like except starcraft pretty much everything ended yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, the, and, yeah. You know, it, it actually transitioned into this is na slightly sort of hybrid banne laga fir wo total war aaya fir rome aaya hmm. yeah so, so but, ha, changes hua tha, wo around. Yeah. I think right now is a pretty like healthy ecosystem in terms of the variety of games. I mean it's still not, I guess, like ideal if you consider, but like in but there's like games of every genre coming out pretty much. Mm. And yeah. yeah, yeah. And pretty much yeah, like n- right now, like most like most genre conventions don't even apply to the many of the popular games. Like, what would you call Papers, Please? It's not a, like what you would say an papers adventure game. Yeah. Yeah. Papers, Please is yeah. an exception because Papers, Please is a more of a concept game. And a concept game is different from a genre game. Genre game, mein kya hai ki, yeah. uh, you think of an idea. Then, mein, you, mein, then you apply yeah. it to fit a template. Yeah. Ah, wahi, uh, basically, wahi that in, in a genre game, you think of an idea and you think of a genre which best fits it. Like whether it's a platformer or a shooter. And then you select from that specific pool of mechanics. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. are exclusive to the genre. But when you think of a concept, you think of an idea and then you design the mechanics so you choose the mechanics around it which best convey that idea. So Papers, Please, case me, it was a concept game because whatever its mechanics are, they were actually meant to convey that kind of yeah. claustrophobia or the lack of choice you had. The constant dilemma, ki, should I yeah. help these people, should I yeah. be good to these people or should I be just uh, do my job so that, um, so that yeah. I will... Uh, be able to survive and see the yeah. tomorrow. So, yeah. perfect dilemma capture. Karta tha wo. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah, even like, 
even brothers a tale of two sons yeah was the, was the same type of game yes i managed to it, uh, like say it correctly this time <laughs> okay yeah, so to an extent that was well yeah definitely uh, by the way um, um if you want to know what was the uh, like what's the next step after braid like braid you talked about the level design which was really good the puzzle design i think the next step the next step stage of evolution after that when it comes to puzzle design was in anti chamber yeah i agree i actually yeah, yeah. played in, like i actually played anti chamber but i i got bored after like 2 hours of it you know the part where it just becomes a block puzzle game yeah no, i i didn't yeah. like it after that it, like it the initial... that if if you keep going it transcends that also a little later it it yeah. it starts yeah, yeah, doing yeah, some yeah. cool things it does because basically what it does is it just does uh merges puzzle with your idea of space and how space can be manipulated yeah exactly uh, yeah 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 that's yeah. right Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I guess like I just stopped stop playing it because like as soon I would play it for ten minutes, then I would get a headache and I would not make any progress. So I would, <laughs> so I did this like seven or eight times, and then I was like, yeah, no, I'm done, can't go any further. <laughs> yeah, that's just like how it just like I don't know, like maybe later it redeems itself, but yeah, no, it does because is me. क्या पता है कि games like Anti Chamber में क्या है that they are they are highly visual oriented. Mm-hmm. So um, the so the kind of puzzles you solve will not be solved purely by trial and error. So you you roam around an area and if you're not able to solve it, then you just quit. You 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 let it rest in your mind for two three days or something, and then when you come back, that solution may end up being uh, uh, that you may end up getting the solution in just ten minutes. It, it, that that was the case with Portal Two as well for me. Yeah, yeah. Portal Two in a sense is also very much like uh, that. Uh. Even though Portal may You exactly know that what tools you have to solve a puzzle. In, uh, in, you know, in it's, simple, those things are not always clear. Always, it's always clear what the puzzle is. Yeah. You no. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's not always clear what the puzzle is. Yeah. Yeah. वही पता नहीं रहता कि ये puzzle है या dead end है या ये खाली level का part है. Yeah. 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 But but generally क्या रहता है कि he has very clearly defined what is puzzle and what is not by distinguishing them as static and dynamic features. मतलब if if a thing generally moves then it is part of the puzzle if it doesn't move then it is not a part of the puzzle right yeah yeah no What? i guess yeah like for me just like the main uh, obstacle was the lack of time so i mean i guess yeah like <laughs> yeah i can yeah definitely try it again i guess yeah i no, mean i can understand it now yeah. it being not an easy game to get into even yeah. even mm. it gave me a lot of migraines because it's a bahut color jaisa ghunda yeah that yeah that color like, part yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. it it like even visually it's not it's not easy to keep staring at the screen for that long because of the way it looks. Uh, yeah. It's one of the big inspirations behind the game that I'm working on right now. Yeah. Anti chamber. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh so yeah, okay so we were going to talk about uh, transistor a bit. I'm not sure how many of us have played it. Rashi has played it. Uh yeah, so, I am playing it currently. Yeah. So yeah, just tell us your thoughts on on the game. Uh so it's super giant and super giant is known for awesome music and awesome artwork uh it's really one of the best games i have seen so far yeah. um i'll talk about uh, I'll, i'll i'll talk a little about uh, the uh, combat system in that which i found a little confusing so you know they have a little turn based thing where you can basically pause the game and then you can plan out your attacks yeah uh, yeah so it was initially confusing like yeah. what are functions and what are uh, what are you know how do i use them yeah. what exactly do i have to do yeah. uh, i wish that explained it a little better they haven't mm. but you eventually get used to it and uh, you you know you combine functions together and yeah. deal as much damage as you can and solve stuff quickly um that is a really good part that i really enjoyed that and i'm uh I'm really fairly hopeful that you know I can use those things in the correct way. Yeah, I just yeah. realized uh, uh-huh. because they, when you said uh, like turn-based combat, I realized yeah. that if Super Giant's art and like and like Fire Axis could come in with a procedural turn-based game, oh my god, shut art, up! Yeah, like I would just <laughs> never need to play another game again because it would be perfect. Like, like what else do you want in this entire world? Like, no, actually, yeah. someone uh, just uh, <laughs> uh, suggested on Twitter that. 
why even make a Far Cry game? Just put Tokyo Jungle on the Far Cry, Far Cry location. Haha. <laughs> 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 well, that would work for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It would, work. It would yeah. still be all wild, but instead of just uh, having uh, racially insensitive situations, you would just <laughs> go yeah, with crocodiles and shit just eating each other out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, it could work actually because like Far Cry Three already had like what tigers, alligators, like I mean, yeah, emus, and then you could probably add a blood dragon DLC to have dinosaurs <laughs> shooting. Like, yeah, I mean, the end boss is <laughs> Godzilla. Like, yeah, that's just like obvious. <laughs> a dog stealth killing Godzilla should be the ending of like this new Far Cry. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's the ending of the next Call of Duty. Like, a, your dog kills Godzilla. Like this might be under NDA, but yeah, but yeah, that's the ending of the next Call of Duty. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would actually sell a lot of lot many copies then. Yeah, yeah. That's what they want to and do it, next yeah. Call of Duty, yes, it would sell a lot of copies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty. That is a better idea for all of the yeah. like. That's a better idea than probably what they're brainstorming right now in the Call yeah. of Duty. Oh my God! You know, I I finished uh, Modern Warfare some time back and. That game is shitty. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but it's shitty. Modern, modern warfare. Yeah, modern. it hasn't aged well. Like. Pehla wala, dusra wala, tisra wala. First, first. Yeah. Oh. First. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I did not first. enjoy yeah. it. I did not enjoy the game. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to finish it. That's why I did it. Because you know, I wanted to know what is the whole big deal about Call of Duty. Because I honestly haven't played many Call of Duty games. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know. I just did not enjoy the whole, you know, army thing. Maybe, maybe it's just me. I didn't enjoy Crisis. I, I don't think you such. are alone in like not enjoying Call of Duty. Like certainly <laughs> not. But, but yeah. No, I think like when I played it, like for, when I first played Call of Duty, I think I was in like first year of college. Uh-huh. So at that time, I was like of a completely different mindset, and I loved big explosions and you know people going ura and blah 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 whatever. Yeah. yeah. But but like when I I tried to play it like two years back, and I was just completely alienated. Because and because like Call of Duty games like based on what they made now they're kind of very topical I guess, and when you go back to like what what the game was like in what based on what the Afghanistan war or something yeah 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 it yeah. just yeah. like I think the Afghanistan war yeah. it just ended its fifth or yeah yeah the uh, yeah. the thing is that call when modern warfare uh for I had the job is COD four yeah. modern warfare I had the ah. Fallout modern warfare the back then those who played it in two thousand seven. It was really enjoyable back then. Which yeah. Whether it was just the campaign or the multiplayer, multiplayer it yeah. was the main reason why it became so popular. Of But course, yeah. I, it still even is. It, even its campaign was pretty good because, okay, it was not as uh, say geared leaning towards realism as the uh, older World War Two uh, COD games. But in mm-hmm. certain jo, uh, levels they 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 were fairly smart even if you look back yeah. right. Now. Yeah, yeah I the think opening I... level, the opening level is still one of my favorite opening levels yeah. in uh, yeah. in shooters. Yeah, and all up, that's one of the yeah, that's that's a great level. Yeah, lot of these levels were yeah. then referenced by many of the other more smarter shooters later on. Abhi yeah. ek ek level tha, I think it was the uh, level where you just control a helicopter. Yeah, uh, the AC one thirty level. Yeah, the AC one thirty wala wo. And, yeah. and you just uh, basically bomb the entire village from below. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So wo that was a, that was just a, a, a strange entry into that uh, yeah. you know, entire campaign. Me, it was a weird level. Looked like that. Yeah. But the armor was gone. Yeah, the black and white thing was yeah. But, very... but five years later, five years later, these uh, these spec ops guys made a very yeah yeah. Oh, yeah, I've Spec-off. played that. Yeah. yeah. And, and spec ops and, just like was if like Call of Duty is the sentence, I guess like spec ops was just the full stop for me. Like I didn't want to play any military game after I played Spec Ops. <laughs> but then they made fun of, uh, well, not fun of, but they just sort of, you know, were challenging yeah. games like Call of Duty and stuff. You know, that yeah, mindless killing. You are. Is me? What is happening? Yeah. But Spec Ops played? Why not? But was it because of a good reason or a bad reason? No, no. I mean, like when I played, <laughs> when I finished Spec Ops, I finished it. Then I didn't yeah. want to play any other military shooter. Okay, yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. reason I played Spec Ops was to. You know, get better at aiming with the controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, no. I think yeah, and like Call of Duty's biggest hurdle now is that like they already had a new go off once, and it was very effective. So yeah. now like the, there's no way they can raise the stakes higher. 
I mean, they tried all sorts of stuff, going to space, etc. Then what, you go to space yeah. in Call of Duty? What well, for? For like one yeah. scripted level, one scripted Dude, level. You know how it is. Fight against other astronauts in space in Call of Duty. Yeah, and like so what do you it's do? completely inaccurate in how like bullets work. Like <laughs> it's just yeah. <laughs> Dude, like I don't care. You fight with other astronauts in space in Call of Duty. That's the beginning and end of how awesome. No, like, but I like, don't care. Okay, wait, I, I want to play that. It's not as awesome as it sounds because at the yeah. end of the day, it's still just. In fact, it's even it may be even boring because in space there's just black black space all around no, you and there are explosions. So it's still boring. I've, I've played I've played that level and I enjoyed. Have you played it. Uh, Have you played that game? There was a multiplayer game uh, shooter called Shattered Horizon, which actually had like yeah, a yeah. yeah. No, that that is that is better in terms of simulating yeah. how space feels like. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, so as a, the problem was that like that like as soon as I uh, like started playing that like that sh- uh, my memories of Shattered Horizon came back into my head, and I was mm-hmm. all all the time I was comparing that and that and I was like, what the hell? This isn't realistic. So yeah, I like, didn't, just, like I don't know. I was play like whenever I play Call of Duty, I want I want two things. I want slow motion scenes in which the president <laughs> or someone's about to be shot, and I can save the day. Yeah. And I want at least one vehicle scene where I'm driving fast while shooting at. You actually uh, yeah. like those like like forced vehicle they're sections? S- they're so fucking dumb, man. Like, I mean, at this point, I don't care what is going on as long as something explodes and I'm on moving on something fast. Uh, yeah. As long as what, what has Call of Duty? What has Call of Duty got against bodies? I mean, you know, like my prote- my player doesn't have a body; it's just a pair of floating eyes with hands. I guess that's kind of their uh, the legacy of the Quake engine. They're still using I, the Quake engine. I mean, it was hilarious yeah. because you know, us make yeah. level hota hai in which you have to carry the sniper guy with yeah. you, so you have to carry him because he's hurt. Yeah. And <laughs> so it yeah. was like pick up, pick this guy up, and I pick him up, and I don't know where he is because I was expecting legs or something, and I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Where the hell is this guy? And I'm searching all over the place, and then I get you know shoot. I mean, people start shooting me. Yeah. So I started running, and then I realized that okay, wait, I'm running slowly, and then I saw the you know icon that it said, "Okay, yeah. you're carrying somebody." Like, oh, <laughs> okay. Oh. No, yeah, that def- yeah, that level, I that le- it was very impactful at that time. But yeah, like it's it's not aged due to their general nature. Like any <laughs> game that relies on spectacle will age poorly, because people get better at making spectacle as tech becomes yeah, better. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. that. Yeah. And the other thing is like. Uh, yeah. The the first Call of Duty game I would still say has the best mission design because even in terms of spectacle, yeah. there's only so many times you can have the big explosion and yeah. have people's jaws drop because yeah. every time you do a big explosion, the the like the impress like how impressed I am is going to reduce exponentially. This yeah. is which is why Modern Warfare is very literally buildings keep like like they they go nuts like they they have you fall off a falling building and shit like that and it's yeah. it's really hmm. dumb. Uh, yeah. At, at, at one point, you're like, okay, dude, there's like the Statue of Liberty has exploded. There's nothing <laughs> you can do at this point. Okay? Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. No, I, don't I remember push. like the campaign of Modern Warfare 2 just becoming so ridiculous that like I just completely like stepped out oh, of it. The Because... end of Modern Warfare 2, Price launches nukes at America. Like I, yeah. I, I, I have no fucking understanding what is going on. Yeah. And no, and at that like, point, I think America has already been nuked. All nonsense, man. Yeah. All this uh, because. But the thing about uh, all of these modern warfare games is that they just glorify the American modern imperialism. Yeah. What they basically yeah. do, and also they amplify the kind of fear that um, many of these close-minded ignorant Americans have on the kind of dangers that they face from the outside world. Whether it's yeah, uh, yeah that's whether... definitely the case. Yeah. And yeah, and yes. my general problem with not just this but the general war games is that they glorify war in the most poorest way. I mean, okay, you yeah. Want... Yeah. If you want to glorify war, then uh, focus on what what is the what, that why are the soldiers doing it? What yeah. is their investment? Like, in mm-hmm. it? like glorifying the aim kind of makes sense. Like what's yeah, the aim? Yeah, but, is, yeah, but like they just focus it on a uh, yeah. simple mission to mission point A to point B. Jao, yeah. Ye, yeah. Ye uh-huh. uh, no, it, not, it it glorifies because, it like, like you I glorify mean, uh, sports. It 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 makes it a sport. Exactly. Literally, yeah. that's what it does. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think, yeah. I think a large yeah. amount of what you're talking about, the glorifying, you know, all of that is implied because the good guys are almost always American. They're almost awesome. always American. So Americans are or, are always fighting for like democracy and all all the things that they claim to fight for. You know, it it that is it is implied that we are the good guys. We don't need to explain mm. that we're fighting for the right. I think you know, which is problematic in itself. Which is problematic in itself. Saying that you need to. 
that you can you can commit an act of violence without having to justify why you're committing it yeah. is problematic because yeah. it teaches people yeah. that when our army goes to fight we don't need a reason to go to fight because if they are going to fight it means we 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 doing it for the yeah, right yeah, yeah. you yeah. know there was there was this meme which perfectly uh, uh, summed up uh, this this modern day african imperialism like there was there was a soldier trying to break break through a door in afghanistan or something uh-huh. and, and the text was open the door freedom beckons <laughs> yeah no definitely yeah uh, yeah and, i and think there's just yeah. this plane uh, that is dropping bombs that if uh, uh, if you don't want freedom freedom comes to you or something like that so, <laughs> you know i think they at this point it's kind of like how politicians deliberately try to appeal to backward areas of your mind you know so it's kind of like that but for america so uh, like we so, should be making call of duty if anything like you know we yeah. should be making the kind of game where the indian army goes and fights and like creates democracy around the world i think that would be too unrealistic even for call so, of duty india is completely non confrontational by nature because they try to avoid wars as long as they can because because of the first the, the, the proper reason is that we we have never had these kind of really strong not just strong but really confrontational leaders who are looking to looking for reasons to fight wars we, we are no, not, not just that i think i think it's because of our geographical location also we're not yeah. like yeah yeah we're surrounded by china pakistan bangladesh and burma which are heavily militarized militarized nations yeah yeah that's true we cannot afford to start a war like thinking ha chalo kuch like it's okay <laughs> america is surrounded especially by canada especially and mexico especially it can flatten both china. those countries just by like blinking and clicking its heels We can't yeah. do that. <laughs> no, but Israel does try. Right? Israel does because Israel. Okay, let's uh, let let's get back to game. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Like I, I I've been trying to do that for like the past half an hour. So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I think let's not discuss the Far Cry two, like Far Cry four box art now because yeah, we have just we have gone way past that. So, so let's talk about the other games that we have been playing. Uh, so Vivek, so, what have you been playing recently? No, so we should we should talk about uh, Anshu's game. We should talk about. Oh yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Sorry. So, Ansh, tell us a bit about Exist, the game you are making. All right, all right. Um, so, so basically, Exist is a, a horror adventure, a first-person horror adventure, mm-hmm. and I'm making it for PC and Mac. Uh, it's a horror adventure, but unlike most horror games, uh, where the horror traditionally comes from monsters or zombies, here the horror comes from the society itself, and uh, you are playing as an oppressed character. But the core concept of this game is that. uh you do not know who you're playing as so basically your character's identity is the mystery uh, the central mystery of this entire game mm-hmm. and uh, uh you have to solve that particular mystery by uh, uh exploring their dreams and their thoughts and their nightmares and um, also along the way help them answer some of these few important philosophical questions the twist to this thing is that uh these characters are procedurally generated so every time you start a brand new save file mm. you are basically playing as someone else mm. and that is gener- uh, and it's a game which is based on a lot of real world issues um so i have basically tried filtering all of my world view through this game and it tries to convey a lot of these things through the mechanics itself like for example if you are born as a poor character you do not obviously know that as a player because you have to find that out Okay. but you will be in this uh, some walled city which has uh, for example uh, two divisions there's a rich part of the city and there's a poor part of the city and if you're born poor you're stuck yeah. in the poor part of the city now in most of these games uh, in almost any adventure game you would be given an option to um, uh, do quests or to solve a puzzle so that you'll be able to enter the rich part of the city and the rich city is uh, blocked by all these large gates and uh, walls which you cannot climb yeah. over Yeah. So uh, right. this game also does give you an option, uh, uh, but it's a pseudo option. It's a fake option because uh, it, it allows you to do these small quests, these uh, short quests, and you get to build a ladder. But the ladder eventually crumbles, so you don't have any other option. But you're stuck in the poor part of the city, and you have to do whatever you can by answering these questions, these helping the the character you're playing as mm-hmm. find answers to those questions, like basic questions, like. if you're poor does it mean that you cannot have happiness of course you can have but how do you find happiness you obviously that happiness answer doesn't lie in the rich part of the city it lies where you are so you have to kind of find that answer in whatever thoughts and explore thoughts and dreams you can have in that poor part of the city okay. and the thing is that this is also a very uh, uh, it like 
uh, there's this uh, style of writing which is called a stream of consciousness writing and uh, it basically follows one thought to another matlab uh, in the game it, there is this like sequence within sequence so uh, say you are exploring the city you uh, you look at some billboard which has this very weird uh, uh, ad sign about something and that basically transports your thought that possibly may transport your thought to some past memory or some random thought and that random thought might be a sequence of its own and that sequence right. might indirectly lead to you being uh, closer to the answer which you're looking for so it is a, like a sequence within a sequence and all of these things are interconnected in a way uh, so so yeah so it's a fairly difficult game to make especially for my first big project mm-hmm. but uh, it's slow progress but it's a progress nonetheless okay so yeah i think this might be the first time i have heard so much about the game and yet i think i now know less about the game than i started <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh, yeah. like from the stream of consciousness thing it sounds like you're trying to make the player feel like they're playing a dream of some sort um the the original motive was kind of like that but it is more to get uh, for the player to be part of the character's thought conscious because the thing here is see the the, the clear difference here in this game and the other game is that uh um, this game clearly divides the character and the player uh that both of them are two separate entities it's kind of like stanley parable but in a more uh conscious uh, fourth wall breaking because here you constantly are aware that uh, and thinking that who am i playing as the character okay. who are you playing as and at the same time the character is also in a very vague sense aware that he is not the only person responsible for his own thoughts so like when you are exploring thoughts you are often given options of uh, like the thoughts of and branch out into different yeah. places so the player is given option to choose some of these branch uh, branch out options and they may end up influencing the character's thoughts so basically taking them into stream of consciousness writing was to have to put the player into the character's mindset and so that they at least get a better idea ki okay looking at this looking at these poor people uh, gives this guy this guy this kinds of thoughts and why is the, why is it like that or looking at a war time recruitment poster uh, brings him back some certain memories from his childhood why there could be some connection to that maybe to who this actually who this guy actually is so it's a, a kind of mystery which doesn't really uh, spoon feed a lot of details to the players directly via dialogues or through explicit hints or like that but it is more of a, a mystery which is going to uh be more figured out by the player in their own thoughts so they have to more they have to think more about it in order to figure it out okay so like the other thing that i kind of didn't get was like this is a horror game you said first person horror right yeah it's a horror game but yeah it's a horror game yeah so, that's right how are you going to design horror as per first thing it's procedurally generated how are you yeah. going to design horror for procedural for a game that's procedurally generated and how are you going to design horror that feels uh instance based when everyone has a different fear yeah sure sure uh, the thing here is that the horror is not traditional in, uh, again in the sense that there, there are going to be literally monsters running after you or there is going to be it's going to be a very different uh, the, the kind of uh, horror which uh, a lot of these uh, um, i forgot those films but uh, the, the uh, do you guys listen to welcome to night vale it's that uh, radio podcast right it yeah it's a podcast it's a podcast and it's a podcast which does this kind of uh, unsettling horror really well so it's 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 the kind of horror which really unsettles you like thinking like what is this yeah, what is this going on and also the horror comes from, uh, the, the main source of horror which i'm saying would come from uh, irrespective of which character you get to play as would be through the situation of uh, like in most most games tend to put you in position of power so whether you're a soldier with a gun or you're yeah. this god or a king in an rts game you always the games always put you in position of power they yeah. uh, games are really uh, less likely or they hate you putting in position of power uh, less power oh. or helplessness because they think that players would get frustrated and uh, okay that means again see the thing is that you have to try to balance these things out and that's where i hope to achieve that kind of balance but it's very clear that the player is in a position of helplessness and they are like in that poor city wala example case 
the player is stuck in that city that they, they do not know where to go and in most adventure games you are supposed to go to somewhere somewhere you're not supposed to be stuck in that place where you start right yeah so 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 yeah so the uh, so the horror comes from the player feeling helpless about why am i not given any power why am i not able to go to this place or why am i stuck here so it's it's a mix of say frustration and helplessness which right. which is uh, designed to mirror the character's own thoughts and feelings themselves it reminds me kind of like the the twilight zone but just yeah i don't know exactly that's what it's like twilight zone I, i i was looking for a more recent example but twilight zone is a very good example of that of the kind of horror which i hope to achieve because i'm a, again a very big fan of twilight zone so so yeah so twilight zone is a great example of, of the kind of horror which i hope to create through this okay and when you said it's procedural uh, like uh, give give us an idea of how much content there is, like you are having to make ha huh, yeah so again yeah. see now since it's procedural like it cannot be something as massive as uh, uh and it's like it's procedural content based thing so it's not like going to be a level design uh, massive differences in level design it's going to be fairly uh, rigid in terms of level design differences there there are going to be uh, different objects and monuments and people you will come across in those uh, fixed settings based on the kind of character you are playing as but the major procedural generation is on, based on the characters so so uh, so basically uh, i just went along with the kind of things that a person could be born with so i uh, so so one of the procedural uh, generated things could be race it could be a gender it could be the kind of background historical background you have could be your your basic life experience or it could be the memory or it could be the personality and the fear so these five streams they have a different variables among themselves and they get uh, procedurally mixed not randomly mixed because it wouldn't make sense if you are a rich white guy who gets oppressed by poor people it doesn't make sense so it has to be a rule based okay. thing okay okay now that you've said that you have to have that in your game you have to have a rich white guy who's yeah. oppressed by no, because, uh, that, that's people. really surprising to me because i thought rich white guys were the most oppressed people in the planet yeah yeah if you go by that streets <laughs> definitely yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, i don't know look, man, i don't know if you've read thomas friedman but the world is flat okay it's proved I, have i read whom yeah i Thomas, don't know about this either here yeah. you, you guys haven't read the world is flat it's no. okay what no i'm old i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> so 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 okay so you basically ha- like each character has a certain like you have certain parameters and yeah, then yeah, tra- and par- then i guess you randomly pick a few and then based on those uh, yeah. semi randomly pick the others yes that's right No, yeah. you don't get to pick, but yeah, yeah. The, no, the I mean by you, I mean the, the programmer. Game. Yeah, the you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's the right. Game. So, so yeah, that sounds interesting. Like, that's that sounds like a game I would want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And the thing is that there are three different scenarios right now, all centered around three different questions. So right now, I'm only working on the first scenario still. Okay. But but that was largely because I took a lot of time uh, uh, scripting all these shaders and that. was because i wanted to create this slightly uh, not a very modern look but a slightly vintage kind of look to the game because, because again the major influences of these games also include the twilight zone so twilight zone ka jo major horror tha is very difficult to replicate on a modern technology it the uh, twilight zone horror worked because it was very old tech and very um, uh abstract and abstract because of its old technology and black and white nature so yeah. so yeah so kind of trying to bring that same kind of feeling out through that uh, through this and is is your shaders they are all fairly vintage and that uh, okay. retro vintage horror kind of look mm-hmm. so ha huh. okay. are you going to have like in welcome to night vale or twilight zone are you going to have like a voice over dude who just sounds super creepy for um story? no actually Uh, it's good that you bring up a point i actually mm-hmm. not mentioned this to a lot of people but um actually the uh, guy who makes the welcome to night vale music is actually going to produce a few tracks for this awesome. oh awesome oh that's awesome. pretty good yeah yeah so uh, so uh, probably is going to become public later on then but yeah so th- it's definitely in the making so uh, 
because I, did, I really wanted that and i knew that uh, I, i knew the person who makes them uh, makes the music so uh, so I just contacted him and he was definitely interested so cool that's, okay that's nice that's yeah. great uh i know this doesn't have any voice work because again this is a purely self funded game and i did, did not think of going to kickstarter or anything else i just wanted to make a game on limited budget so yeah yeah don't the, you hate it how like everyone just ke- like keeps on going to kickstarter these days oh. like yeah what's up with that yeah oh no no yeah but uh, i'm yeah. really glad this super hot basically thing why don't you just like you know whip your dick out and says har koi arvind nahi ban sakta and then like <laughs> no that, that would that would make me sound like another arvind in indian like in the indian consciousness so like who's bloody diverting the topic now <laughs> you did with with like that comment right now like i yeah. i was insulting you you went into politics now wait so 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 insulting me is not diverting the topic but anyway yeah so uh, is there anyone else uh, working with you on this game or is, is it just you i uh, know it, it it initially began as my own project but a uh, few months down the line i realized that the scope of this game is becoming too large for me mm-hmm. and since i just i wanted to work this on part time i'll never be able to finish it so i needed someone to who would be handling the aspects of uh, environment modeling and art and animation especially environment modeling and animation in particular uh, because I, i am not really that good with maya so um so yeah I, i'm collaborating with an artist from toronto so uh, so so when we actually showed the game in toronto uh, two weeks back uh, she was the one who was actually present there i obviously did not go to toronto for that so uh, hey guys this is vivek uh, This is edited in after we had our chat. Uh, after this point, we lost a lot of our audio because of like bad sound quality. Uh, so yeah, you know this is it. That that was this week of the Dead Horse Podcast. We will see you next week uh, with another episode, uh, and we hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.